In January 2021, 23 Chinese swimmers tested positive for a banned substance at a training camp. Chinese anti-doping agency, or Chinada, launched an investigation into the matter and concluded that the positive tests resulted from food contamination that occurred in a hotel kitchen where the athletes were staying. None of the athletes were suspended or punished in any form. World Anti-Doping Agency, or WADA, accepted Chinada's findings and cleared the athletes to compete. Three of those athletes went on to win gold medals in Tokyo Olympics, and 11 of them recently competed in Paris Olympics. This entire episode was a secret until it was revealed by a New York Times investigation in April this year. Then in June, the Times further revealed that three of these 23 athletes had tested positive several years earlier for a different performance-enhancing drug. Those field tests were also blamed on food contamination. The revelations have raised anger and frustration over WADA's handling of these cases. They turned a blind eye to what happened and allowed the athletes to participate in the games while hiding the positive test results from the public. The most notable critic of this episode has been Travis Tygaard, the CEO of United States Anti-Doping Agency, or USADA. And it's beyond question that China didn't follow the rules. They effectively swept this under the carpet because they didn't find a violation, they didn't announce a violation, they didn't disqualify the athletes from the event at which they tested positive. That's a cover-up of these cases by the Chinese Anti-Doping Agency and WADA went along with it. I spoke to David Howman, former general director of WADA, about this allegation. It's the Chinese authorities who, who had the responsibility for the test, who should have followed the WADA rules and told the athletes, issued a provisional suspension, asked the athletes for any explanation, then dealt with the explanation if it was received from the athletes. Now, that was not followed. The, the normal procedure would have been for WADA to have gone to the Chinese authorities and said, you haven't followed the process, you need to do that straight away before we get involved. As New York Times noted in their report, had any of these athletes been suspended even temporarily, that might have caused their ability to compete at the qualifying meet for Tokyo Olympics. U.S. Justice Department has now opened an investigation into the Chinese doping case. WADA claims that it has been unfairly caught in the middle of geopolitical tension between superpowers. I think they found themselves in a position where they feel that they're under attack and they're responding uh, to an attack by attacking themselves. Why not show us the report they received from the Chinese authorities, the very good scientific analysis that they must have had received, the expert evidence or the expert evidence from those scientists and, and the legal opinions. Now, if, if you've got nothing to hide and you're an international transparent organisation, publish those documents so that everybody can go away and say, now we understand why you reached that decision. It's simple, but it's not happening. The food contamination theory, which Mr. Tygaard has characterized as Tinkerbell came and sprinkles and fairy dust, has also raised doubts. The banned substance in this case involving 23 athletes is trimetazidine, or TMZ. It's a prescription-only heart medication that can also be used to increase physical performance. It's only available in pill form. Chinese investigators discovered traces of TMZ in the kitchen two months after the initial positive tests. They concluded that TMZ must have somehow entered the food of the 23 athletes in the hotel kitchen. The onus of proof flips in a case where the um, athlete has to demonstrate how their sample has a prohibited substance in it. What is still remaining as a question, however, is what the source of this heart medication, the TMZ, was. Who is it that brought it into the kitchen? How did it get into the athlete's food? That remains uh, unanswered, and that's where a number of people around the world are still asking questions. According to WADA's statement, WADA ultimately concluded that it was not in a position to disprove the possibility that contamination was the source of TMZ, and it was compatible with the analytical data in the file. As such, and based on the advice of external counsel, WADA considered that an appeal was not warranted. What you had is a number of lawyers inside the organisation reaching a decision that they were not going to take steps that they could have done under the rules. Um, that's not really their call. It should be the call of a tribunal. And you should, if you're an international body with full transparency 
allow the tribunals to make those decisions. It didn't occur. That, as it turns out, wasn't the end of it. Just last week, New York Times reported that in 2022, two Chinese swimmers tested positive for a banned anabolic steroid called methadionone. This time, the athletes were promptly put on provisional suspension, but the failed tests were ultimately blamed on contaminated burgers that the athletes purchased at a McDonald's. This all kinds of controversy around that from an Australian angle because they're suggesting that it was Australian beef that was involved. The idea that steroids could have um, originated from Australian beef seems highly problematic, but it is true that the World Anti-Doping Agency has recognised meat contamination in a range of different settings, including in China, because there are farmers in China who still use steroids in um, producing both beef and pork particularly. WADA, once again, didn't challenge Chinada's decision. Both athletes were cleared of any wrongdoing, and one of them went on to compete at the Paris Olympics. After these series of revelations, some athletes have voiced their concerns of a fairness of the game. What really matters also is, were they training clean? Everyone's heard what the athletes think. They want transparency, they want further answers to the questions that still remain. Well, I hear the athletes. I mean, they're the ones that have to go through all the processes to, to show that they're clean. They have to make themselves available 24 hours a day, basically, to, to be able to give a urine or blood test or both. You know, it's just, it's just not really something that you're going to say, oh, that's great, they can get away with it, but we can't. That said, both experts I talked to believe that we can still trust the global anti-doping structure is sound and trustworthy. I think the structure and, and the formation of uh, the agency, is, it's a good one. It's the people that are making it up that might, might need to look and say, uh, are we the right people to be doing the job? Of all the Chinese swimmers embroiled in this controversy, 12 of them competed in the Paris Olympics. The Chinese swimming team won 12 medals in total. Pan Zhanle broke his own world record in men's 100-meter freestyle before producing the fastest relay lag in history to help China secure another gold medal in men's 4x100-meter medley relay. He is not among the athletes embroiled in aforementioned controversies. However, that didn't stop people from casting doubt on his historic achievements. In a now-deleted video, Aussie swim coach and former Olympian Brett Hogg called Pan Zhanle's performance not humanly possible and not real. So don't sell it to me. Don't shove it down my throat. It's not real. To me, it's a real shame because here's, here's an athlete at the peak of their career coming to an Olympic Games where they want to succeed. And to have doubt about them is something that really grates on me. I mean, I'd, I'd like to applaud athlete significant performances. Why can't we just sit back and applaud those performances? If it's because there is suspicion of the anti-doping process, then we need to do something about that.